Hello and welcome back to the channel. Please make sure to like, comment and subscribe. It really, really helps out. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a little bit of work with the slice tool. So, this is the tool. It is a, it's like a craft knife, but it's got a ceramic blade. I don't know if you can see that. Ooh. Instead of a metal blade. Um, they're really strong. This one, I believe, was £8 from Amazon. Oh, you can see the slice there. There's also another one. I'll just grab it. This one. Um, it's got a much smaller blade. You can see side by side there. I didn't really like using this one. The handle is very, very nice. Um, but the blade was just a bit small for me. It was a bit... I just prefer this one. They're both made by Slice, the same company. But I do prefer this one. So, uh, I'm going to show you how to use it on the cows. I'll just change my lighting up a bit here. That's better. So, this is on drafting film, as you can see. Uh, drafting film is great to use these Slice tool with because it's not absorbent, so it doesn't take the colour in. So it's very easy to pull the colour back out. So, I'm going to work on the highlights down his back, which is sort of around this area. Uh, I'm not going to use any pencil, I don't think, <laughs> in this video. It's just going to be the slice tool. Um, I'm going to use it so, hopefully you can tell, I'm using like this flat angle there onto the page, not the pointy bit, because it gets a little bit scratchy and I don't like it, and it makes a really horrible sound. So using that nice flat angle... I'm just going to pull out some areas which are lighter. This is a great way to add highlights back into your drawing. The most important part is don't go too hard because you might tear the paper. Or it might leave dents in the paper. You don't want that. It literally, probably about the same force it would take to just not even like indent your hand, just like that sort of thing. So act like it's your hand or something underneath and you don't want to hurt yourself. Also, it's great to use a brush for this part because you do get a lot of debris and dust come up. Don't worry if you pull a little too much off. You can always go back in with your pencil and uh, add your colours back in. If you've got lots of different layers underneath like I have, you get some really nice like, variations of colour. So you could have some of this nice bright orange or the yellows or even a bit of the brown. Which makes it look a lot more realistic because you haven't just got the like, a bright white. And again, because drafting film doesn't absorb anything, it's easy to work back into. You go back over it with different colours and then you can scratch back into it again. It's really therapeutic. Well, I think it is. It makes a nice difference to a drawing. So you can see the difference there, hopefully. I chose this one because the cows are so fluffy. <laughs> it means there's lots and lots of different areas of light where you can capture bits. Like that. Again, applying pretty much no pressure still getting the good effect. You have to be quite careful in the darker areas because obviously there's a lot more contrast between the white or the, the lighter colours than the dark and it can look a bit silly so just bear it in mind. I'm sort of darting about all over the place here but it's really good fun so... <laughs> 
I'm just looking at where I can see light in the picture and then trying to replicate it in the same place. It's also a great way to uh, blend lines. So, so here where his head is, his chin's there, and his face is much lighter than his uh, his body. So instead of having a really straight line, so it looks a bit cartoony, you can like feather it out so it looks like the fur from his nice light face is overlapping his darker body. You always want to make sure you're um, scratching over the darker bit so it looks like the lighter part has got onto the dark part. Do a bit of his head. Head's nice and light. Again, it works really good in areas where you've got a lot of contrast. Um, which is quite good here because he's got some very dark parts like around his legs and his neck and stuff because he's so fluffy. Hope you can tell it's literally the amount of pressure I'm using or not using, should I say? It's you literally just have to glide it over the surface and it'll do what you want it to do. Again, if you don't want that sort of very thin, scratchy line, you can sort of use it if you angle it up a little bit more. Don't do it directly like you're cutting something with a craft knife because you just go straight through the paper or the film but you just want to instead of holding it like this just hold it like that and sort of use less of a, a surface area that will hit your, your, your paper So, I'm pretty happy with that. But some areas where, I'll just zoom in so hopefully we'll be able to tell. It's a bit better. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Where I've gone just a little bit too light. So, like down here, I'm just going to go back into it. Very lightly. Again, same sort of pressure, like not even making an indentation on my hand. Ooh. Nice little circles. Let's go over some of these areas that are a little bit too light. You can still see there's a difference. There's still a very small highlight there, but it's not quite as. Oh, I've just gone over this in white and added a highlight. Make it look much more realistic. Because not all highlights are white, they're just lighter shades. But it's a much easier way to add in those highlights and make it look a lot more natural. Obviously, some of them are very close to white, so it's okay. Then you can go back into other areas. So. So there you go guys, that's my very very quick tutorial on how to use 
the slice tool to add highlights into your drawings. Uh, if you've got any questions, comment them down below and I'll answer them when I can. And I'll see you next time.